Hola Juan. Hola, buenos días. Estaba con un poquito de dificultad de ingresar aquí, pero ya parece que tenemos las cosas uh, bajo control. Perfecto. Eh, creo que todavía tiene que ingresar Samara. Eh, ¿Vos ya tenés igual? ¿Te aparece como intérprete? No, aquí no tengo nada. No tengo ningún botón, nada. Ya. No te preocupes, ahora cuando entra Samara es la que justamente setea. Listo. Eh, buen día para los de la audiencia. Veo que hay ya personas conectadas. Eh, vamos a, todavía es temprano, y vamos a testear que todo esté correcto. Buen día para todos. Vamos a estar haciendo un testing para después ya comenzar. Buen día, Luis. Buen día, Mari. Yo estoy como host, mas yo estoy esperando a... a, a... A Samara, eu não lembro como, como autorizar o Juan os direitos, ou passar para ele os direitos de, de intérprete. Você, você sabe fazer isso? Eu posso não, passar o host. Espera que a ver Samara se entra. Hi, ah, tá Sandra. Bom. Morning. Hi, morning. How are you doing? Good. And you? Fine. Thank you. Bom dia, bom dia a todos os que estão escrevendo, né? Lá no chat. Prazer, estou vendo que são de, de Peru, Brasil. Sempre um prazer estar conectados. Vamos esperar. Vou colocar por enquanto o eh, um slide. Eh, Sandra, eh, I will just share my presentation right now, but because of logistics, then I will stop sharing and this is all yours. Okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Luis, alguna no noticia de espera. Ahora sí. Ahora ela tá, agora ela tá, tá se conectando. Eu vou fazer ela host. E aí ela vai poder encaminhar a questão, ajustar a questão. Samara, você me avisa quando já Juan está disponível para começar a dar início. Já podemos dar início? Já está? Estão todos? Sim. Quantos minutos? E dois. Um, ok, vou aproveitar, vamos começar em eh, I5, né? mas vou, vou falar primeiro em português. Eh, y después en español, con algunas dicas, dicas tu evento. Eh, obrigado a todos por participar primero. Gracias a todos por participar primero. Y eh, Mariela López, eu sou responsável por las soluciones de ingeniería. Responsable de las soluciones de ingeniería y geociencia. Creo que estamos en video. Soluciones de ingeniería y geociencia para Latinoamérica. La idea de hacer este este segundo encuentro y ya hemos tenido una excursión virtual en agosto, pero la verdad es que hemos recibido un feedback muy bueno, aparte otros ejemplos, con oil y gas, petróleo y gas en Argentina y en Ancas, en minería, en otros lugares, pero pues con el encapsulamiento y las limitaciones de viajes, creo que estos viajes virtuales 
tienen más relevancia. Por lo tanto, con mucho gusto les presentamos pues un evento de excursión geológica virtual. Vamos a tener traducción en línea del inglés al español. No en portugués en esta ocasión por una cuestión de respeto a los demás países que hablan castellano y normalmente tenemos más solicitudes de traducción al español. Por lo tanto, los que hablan portugués, quédense en este mismo canal en el cual estoy hablando y pueden cambiar ulteriormente para el castellano. Es algo que os toca a vosotros. Siguiendo en portugués con las chicas y a continuación me voy al español y la sección se grabará y vosotros, cuando se finalice, dentro de más o una hora, recibirán un correo y creo que con mi dirección, con un enlace de la sesión grabada y con más informaciones, por ejemplo, un enlace para generar, generar el certificado. A veces se pide, pues, a veces se necesita un certificado de la asistencia a estas sesiones y tendremos, pues, un enlace para generar este certificado. Ulteriormente vamos a contestar a todas las preguntas que hagáis, pero os pido que si las pueden mandar eh, por el UNA y para dejar el... Vocês que están eh, 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 se presentando de diferentes países, ¿no? Eh, y creo que no estoy esqueciendo más nada. Eh, voy al español entonces, ya dando inicio formal al, al evento. Hablé recién en portugués, creo que dio para entender perfectamente, pero por las dudas, para que no pierdan ningún, eh, ninguna, ninguna dica. Ahí está. Eh, el evento va a estar grabado. Eh, hoy tenemos eh, traducción online. La persona es Juan. Juan ya está conectado. Él va a estar traduciendo en forma online la sesión de Sandra, que es en inglés. Sandra está basada en Ámsterdam, ella es PhD en geociencia, después ella se va a presentar. Eh, van a poder ustedes seleccionar en la parte de abajo donde ven interpretación, interpretation, van a poder seleccionar el canal, ¿sí? si quieren mantenerse en el canal, ahí dice portugués, Spanish, porque fue de otra sesión, pero van a ver English, Spanish, con la opción de poder elegir el canal. Eh, esa es la primera dica, después que esta sesión está siendo grabada, vamos, van a recibir un email eh, con el link de la grabación, todas nuestras sesiones las subimos a nuestro canal de YouTube, eh, y en ese email, um, Incluso la sesión anterior de Virtual Trips, si quieren verla, también está en nuestro canal de YouTube. Pero en ese email van a recibir el link al video eh, como otras informaciones. Puede ser una presentación, puede ser eh, el link para generar los certificados en forma automática. ¿tá? La otra dica es, eh, vamos a responder preguntas hacia el final de la presentación. Eh, lo que les pedimos es, por un tema de organización, enviarlas a través del Q&A. Eh, que para nosotros nos facilita ir respondiéndolas, y caso por cuestiones de tiempo no lleguemos a responder todos, eh, todas las preguntas, después es algo que nosotros nos ponemos en contacto con ustedes individualmente. ¿tá? Y lo último, el certificado. Quienes necesiten un certificado de asistencia, como dije en el link que van a recibir en el email, van a tener el link eh, para generar el certificado de asistencia a esta sesión. Creo que con eso ya cubrí todo y estamos en tiempo ya. Eh, voy, de, voy a dejar de compartir. Eh, Sandra, now this is all yours. I think, uh, do you need me? Um, let me see. I think I stopped sharing. Is that right? Um, I, I think you're still uh, uh, sharing. Okay. Mm. Bueno, eh, now I leave with you, I will leave and join again because I'm not able now to do that, just in case I'm leaving. Espera, espera, mate. Deixa, deixa, deixa eu ver se eu consigo. 
Listo. Pronto, ya feliz. <laughs> There we go, Sandra. Gracias. Hi, everyone. Hello. I will uh, start sharing my screen. Um, so I hope everyone can see it. Yes. Um, okay, let me start. Yes. Okay, so um, yeah, so Mariela already covered the introduction. So I will um, I will first start with a brief introduction, and then we'll really go on this uh, virtual field trip. So um, just first, very briefly, um, uh, some background about me. So I am uh, Sandra Merten. I'm based in Amsterdam. Um, I have a background in geology, so I have a master's and a PhD in uh, in geology. And um, at the moment, I'm the senior product manager for GeoFacets, um, where I'm responsible for the development of GeoFacets, such as adding more content, um, also the user interface, but especially at the moment, focusing on uh, developing uh, analytical decision support solutions uh, to really help answer uh, problems uh, in the industry and also in academia. And so, um, just first, uh, an introduction. Um, also, you know, with my with my geoscience background, I also wanted to share some uh, some of my thoughts about yeah why field trips are so important in geosciences. So, uh, of course, one to really experience geology in the field. So here you actually see a picture of me on one of my uh, first ever field trips, um, and I still remember uh, very well that. Um, I almost couldn't believe until I really saw it for real that, you know, rocks could be folded. Uh, there's all these things that, you know, really by seeing them for real, um, you really start to understand, um, yeah, what, what geology is about. Then another thing, um, of course, why field trips are so important is uh, to develop field skills. So uh, to learn, to observe, or and, and then, of course, then the next step to then also understand what you see. And so, again, I, I thought it would be nice to um, illustrate uh, with the with the small, uh, you know, example of myself. So um, what you see on the left here is uh, one, again, from one of my first field trips, a, a sketch that I attempted to make. Um, and you can see that it's pretty basic. It's in Dutch, but uh, yeah, it's pretty basic. I, I was not really able, you know, to capture that much information yet. And then what you see here on the right is, you know, uh, later um, after, you know, years of experience in geology. Um, yeah, one of the sketches that I made back then, you know, making sure orientation is there, uh, taking photos, making sure that once you get back uh, in this case, this was for my PhD. Once I got back at the university, that they could still recognize what everything was about. Where do all the pictures belong? And so I think yeah, that's another really important component of uh, yeah, field trips. Then, of course, you know, to collect samples or to collect data um, can be structural data, uh, rock samples, ca can be anything. And then, of course, in the end, to really analyze and synthesize and, and in the end, develop geological knowledge. And so, yeah, I think, um, yeah, to, to my knowledge, I, I did not really ever encounter a geologist or meet a geologist, yeah, who, who really uh, thought that fieldwork is not that, uh, not that important. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, in general, uh, most geoscientists... In general, the majority are in agreement that these excursions are very important. Pero el problema es que ni siempre es posible hacer las exploraciones in situ. Eh, a, los veces, a veces los sitios están muy lejos por distintos motivos, están muy lejanos o quizás hay riesgo. There is also budget and resource constraints. Uh, and then, yeah, the situation we are in at the moment, it might be there's a pandemic due to which you are not able to travel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, some of the things, of course, that I showed, like collecting samples or, or some of the other things, like really experiencing geology in the field cannot be totally replaced by virtual field trips. But yeah, given that at the moment, um, yeah, we have to come up with alternatives, then really virtual field trips can really be uh, the next best thing, I think. And so that's what, you know, I, I wanna show today uh, with yeah, a few examples. 
So what we will use is uh, GeoFacets, and I will briefly explain what GeoFacets is um, for those of you who are not familiar with GeoFacets yet. And then the other tool we will use is Google Earth. And so we will basically go back and forth between the two um, to really do a virtual field trip in three different areas. So just first, very briefly, what is GeoFacets? So GeoFacets answers geoscience questions by combining uh, essential knowledge. And so this is basically uh, a database of geoscience information and data sourced from scientific publications. So that's like different scientific publications from different publishers. And I will show you a bit more detail in, in the next few slides. Um, then the, the second thing is easy discovery. And so geoscientists, usually uh, they are interested in a certain area, in a certain basin, in a certain mountain belt. And so what is really important with geofacets is the ability to be able to search, search spatially. So you can basically really uh, target the area of interest through spatial search. And then the third is seamless integration. So very often there is lots of relevant information. Think of maps in an article or maybe a table with data in an article. Um, but yeah, as a geoscientist, you want to be able to use the information and the data. And so with geofacets, um, uh, things like maps, tables, they are available for download in ready to use format so that they can really be used, for example, in GIS like Google Earth or, or ArcGIS uh, and with tables, for example, for example, think about Excel to analyze there. So if we go in a bit more detail, so I mentioned essential knowledge. So on the left, you see all the different publishers and societies for which GeoFacets currently contains uh, information. So you can see Elsevier, but also a lot, of other, uh, a lot of other content sources, such as the Society of Exploration Geophysicists, but also Wiley, Geological Society of London, AAPG, SPE, um, and you can see the full overview there. And so what we basically do with GeoFacets is we go into those journals, um, we identify what kind of information is in there. And that's uh, what you see on the, on the right. So we go into the article, we uh, assess, are there maps in the article? Are there uh, photos in the article? Are there other types of figures or tables in the article? And so basically all that content gets categorized accordingly. And so then in the end, we know in those articles, like how many maps are there, how many tables are there. And this then really allows you to, to search in geofacets uh, directly for maps, directly for outcrop photos. And, and this is uh, some of the things that we will use later uh, during the virtual field trip. And so at the moment, GeoFacets contains uh, 2.2 million maps, figures, and tables. And so this information is also further enriched with metadata. So think of what kind of map is it? Is it a tectonic map? Is it an uh, oceanographic map, a structural map? Um, the same for uh, uh, location information, for example, where is the map located? Where are the figures located? And then if possible, we also try and georeference the maps um, so that they can be further integrated into GIS. So then, yeah, on to this easy discovery. So it's a nice segue because so this enrichment is being used for the discovery. So, um, of course, you know, the fact that we enrich uh, maps and other uh, figures and tables with uh, spatial information then allows you to also find back uh, that content through spatial searching. Um, and then um, also, yeah, to easily drill down. So let's say that you specifically search for a tectonic map for a certain area through the metadata. Uh, this is possible in GeoFacets. Then uh, the last point, so this integration, this is just uh, to give you a bit of an idea what kind of integration options are available. So I mentioned already, uh, for example, that the maps, we try and georeference those, about 70% of the maps can be uh, georeferenced. You can uh, probably imagine that not all the maps can be georeferenced. For example, uh, we have some really old hand-drawn maps um, where we cannot accurately georeference, um, but it can also be, it's, uh, for example, paleogeographic reconstruction where the plates are not in the present day situation. So there's like different reasons why some maps cannot be georeferenced, but on average about 70% of the maps can be georeferenced. Um, so that, you know, is then available as, for example, GeoTIFF or a KMZ for integration into uh, ArcGIS 
here or Google Earth. And then, of course, like the figures, they're also available for download as a, a TIFF or a JPEG if you want to include it in like a report. And then I mentioned the tables available in Excel. And then um, we do also have for, you know, some users, they prefer to, for example, work directly from ArcGIS. So we also offer those types of integration options where users can basically uh, do everything that I'm going to show you today directly from within ArcGIS using a plugin. So yeah, that's just a brief introduction as to what GeoFacets is so that you'll understand uh, what we're going to do later when we go on the virtual field trip. Just some examples of how GeoFacets can help. So um, one example could be uh, maybe in oil and gas, uh, you are looking for information for a specific geographic area, uh, maybe when you're exploring a basin or preparing for a lease sale. So here you see an example that we created for uh, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the, the Mexican part, where we basically um, uh, use geofacets to find what was already published in terms of oil and gas data, seismic lines, wells, um, and then creating this uh, model that you see at the bottom. Another example could be in, in uh, mineral exploration uh, and in mining. Uh, maybe you're looking for data to analyze the characteristics of a deposit. For example, what are the geochemical or geophysical uh, properties? So here you see another example of how um, a map together with a table with all the data can you know, very quickly give you insights uh, on, on this type of uh, questions. And then the third example, uh, maybe you're just looking for, a, a, um, in general, for a researching a specific feature um, or maybe trying to find analog. So um, here you actually see an example is a very different example. This was about uh, water resources um, to look at the groundwater quality in an area in Egypt. So, so that's an example you see here, but it can, of course, be anything. It could be maybe you're interested in Portland basins or fold and trust belts. And so that is, is another example of how uh, yeah, geofaces can help. And then uh, last but not least, what we will be doing today, uh, find maps, outcrop photos, and other information either to prepare for a field trip so that you really can make the most out of your field trip, or if a field trip is not possible, um, how with geofaces and then also Google Earth, you can do a virtual field trip. And so that is really the example that we will cover today. So just one thing, um, it's virtual. And so the advantage of that is that we can go anywhere we like. And so, yeah, I just wanted to illustrate that to you um, that um, here you see some examples of some of the virtual field trips that, that we already uh, uh, did. So it's the ones you see at the top. So for example, um, a virtual field trip to the Colorado Front Range in the Rocky Mountains, uh, the Sorbos Basin in Southeast Spain, and then another one, uh, the, the Tolbachik Volcano, really in the far east of of Russia in Kamchatka. So this is some of the virtual field trips we did. And then uh, below in orange, you see uh, the virtual field trips that we will be doing today. So we will start with uh, Torres del Pain in Chile. Then we'll go to Altiplano to look at uh, lithium, uh, to look at brines. And then uh, just uh, looking at a few examples of rare earth elements, uh, information that, that we could find for Brazil. So that is really what we will be looking at today. Um, so I'm going to stop the video because I will be using lots of different tools. Um, so from here on, we will go to uh, the virtual field trip. So just first, let me start with the first example to uh, give a bit of context. So this first example is where we will really start to explore uh, just the general geology. And so, as I mentioned, we will be using both GeoFacets and Google Earth to do that. And so I'm now going to switch from the slides um, live to GeoFacets and uh, to Google Earth. So what you see now is GeoFacets. And so this is a, a web-based application. And so you may have noticed that a big portion of GeoFacets is made up by a map. And so this is this spatial searching that I have been uh, talking about in the introduction. So let's zoom in on our area of interest. So I'm just going to zoom. And then we will start just first um, with um, uh, just a spatial query in GeoFacets to get an idea what is published uh, for our area of interest. And so I'm going to start a bit broad. 
um, to get started. So I'm going to basically use the, the rectangle search. So here on the left, you see the different search options. So I mentioned uh, it could be that you're uh, researching a topic. Uh, so here you see as an example, Cretaceous Rift Basins. Um, there, you know, is a lot of options to do either a text search or to use the advanced search features. If you directly want to jump to an area of interest, then the rectangle or polygon search options allow you to draw uh, an area of interest on the map. And so I'm going to start with rectangle. And then I'm just going to uh, draw a search, a search box here to see what we can find in geofacets. And so keep in mind, this is a spatial query. So this is not, refi not refined yet for any topics or specific types of content. And so what you see is that basically for the box that I drew, there is almost 400 results. And like we can already very quickly see the kind of results that we're getting uh, through this preview. And so this is, might be a little bit different than what you're used to uh, when you start more from an article. In this case, you start more from looking visually at what is available in terms of, in this case, we see a lot of photos. Uh, where is it located? So that is what the map helps you to quickly assess. So you can see as I hover over the results, a blue pin is appearing so that you can locate because you may have wondered what are all these uh, blue bubbles. That is basically the number of results and we cluster that together um, because yeah, if we would show all of these individually, the map would be really crowded and you wouldn't be able to see. But so this hover uh, option allows you to then basically uh, view the location of each individual result. Uh, on the left is the, the, the option to refine. And so you can see there is the option to refine by content type. So for example, if you want maps or photos, um, you could even specify that you want georeference maps or what type of map do you want. And then there's lots of other options to filter such as subject, basin, publication year, of course, author, author keywords, source title, and then also publisher uh, uh, content source. So just to show you where all, all those results are from. So with that, because yeah, we want to go on a virtual field trip, right? We can already see quite some uh, nice outcrop photos, um, but I am really going to specifically refine for outcrop um, so that we hopefully really narrow down because still um, it's quite a lot what we had so far. And so with this, we narrowed down to 200 results. So what we can now do is we can start to explore results spatially. And so I'm going to focus here on this area where you see the bubble with the three results. So I'm going to open that and then we're going to check um, what kind of detailed information is there. So we can see here, this first result is a map. Um, we can scroll down, we can see here at the top uh, the article from which this map was sourced. Then below, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see uh, the caption so that we can quickly read through the result and, and assess whether this is relevant to us or not. And so since we're going here on a virtual field trip, yeah, I think this is a pretty good start, especially because I also see here some nice photos. So yeah, it gives us a start to start exploring virtually. Um, if we then look, so you may have noticed all these other um, uh, tabs here at the top and these options here to the to the right. So what we can basically do, we can take a look at the article to see um, and read a bit more. So this is really the first order assessment. So here we can read um, about uh, the, the age. So this is about the Pluton. Um, and so we're going to dive into that in, in more detail. We can read about the age so we can quickly see this is uh, two and a half a million years uh, old, so that it's an intrusion. And so like that, you can really start to build a picture uh, of, of the area of interest. So if we go back to the result, we can also take a look at the original image because this is pretty small. And so before I'm deciding, do I want to download this or not? I just first want a full view. And so this view gives you uh, the map, but within the whole context of the original fig figure. And so we can see here the map that we were looking at, but we also see this nice panoramic view. And then if we go down, we see more information. So we see also a section, a sketch of a section, and then uh, additional photos. 
And so with that, we can slowly start to explore uh, the results. We can also look at related results. So for example, here, I see that there is another uh, nice uh, picture uh, in more detail. And so this allows us to see um, to see as if, you know, we were at the outcrops. So what I'm going to do now to make it uh, a bit more lively, I am going to actually download this particular map and then I'm going to open it into uh, Google Earth. Because yeah, then together with the nice uh, satellite views that you have in Google Earth, we can really start to explore virtually. So let me download then. So this gives you the option to basically uh, then select. So in this case, because I want to open it in Google Earth, I'm going to choose the KMZ. So we're going to download that one. And then as soon as it is downloaded, I can just simply open it in Google Earth. And so what we're doing now is we're really nicely zooming in. The map gets overlaid onto Google Earth. Uh, we can look at it in a different view. We can also take a look at uh, really the, the source information. So you may have noticed this pin here. So this holds all the information that we just saw in GeoFacets so that you don't lose the context. Because yeah, maybe now with one map, it's still okay. But as we are um, you know, expanding and doing our field trip, we of course wanna remember like, where did we get the information from? Who are the authors? And we also wanna be able to go back you know, to look at related information from the same article and so uh, this is what you can use this for. And so what I did is, um, so, so I basically, you know, searched geofacets. I, I found some really nice maps. I found uh, some, you know, nice photos. And so what I did is I, uh, I added all of that into Google Earth. And so we're now going to switch to, um, you know, the field trip that I have already been doing and uh, that I want to, sh you know, take you on this field trip today. So yeah, this is basically this first map. So it's exactly where we just left off. So you could see uh, before how easy it was, you know, to just integrate that map. And so from there, we will now continue. Uh, of course, you can also choose to, to maybe uh, change the transparency a bit if you want to like take a look at, you know, the, the view so we can very nicely see here uh, the elevation and then how the map drapes uh, on top of that. So what we're now going to do is um, really start to explore it also using Google Earth. So for that, what I always really like is that, that you can use, you know, like uh, either the satellite imagery, if it's something you want to uh, look at from above, or that you can use street views or, uh, you know, uh, photospheres that are available in Google Earth. Yeah, to, to almost pretend this if you are, uh, exploring the area, uh, but in this case, virtually. And so the first thing I found is this location here. I mean, so I, I'm not sure if everyone is aware, but you have this, of course, this street view option, and then usually it will indicate. So with the blue lines, you can see like where is detailed information available. And so this is one of the nice locations uh, that I found uh, where we want to start. So we're basically going to zoom in there and then we'll start to explore. So here we are. And so we can already see it's as if we are walking here. So we're going to cross the bridge. I just want to uh, get out of the trees and try and see if we can get a better view. And so as such, it's almost as if we are hiking there virtually. And so you can see now we get a bit of a better view. We can look around. Um, even here seeing uh, that there is a, even we can read the directions. And so that, you know, really gives us the idea of, um, yeah, like walking there virtually. So that is the first location. So here we're seeing um, the area of interest from, uh, uh, from, the, from the east. What we're now going to do, so if you remember, that first map also had a nice uh, viewpoint. Uh, in, in that original image, we saw the photo with the interpretation. And so um, the location was indicated in the article. So I basically went ahead and I created location two. So now we're really going to go into the, into the, into the Pluton. And so let's move there. 
And so later I will zoom out. I will just um, hide the map so that we can actually see. So here we can see. Um, so what I did, okay, what I did, so here is the view from Google Earth. And so I basically added uh, that image uh, to the, the, the location marker that I created. And so now we can see, so here we can see the features in Google Earth, like this one really uh, sticks out and we see here this, um, these different features. If we then switch on, then we get to see that. So the, one, the first feature I highlighted is this one. Here we can recognize this and we can really yeah, start to form this, this idea of, of like where we are. So then from there, um, yeah, like to just look at a different perspective, I uh, found this geological map and so we're going to zoom out. And so that will also allow us to, to see like where we have been so far. So here we first started in location one. Uh, this is the north, so the north is at the top. Um, then here location two was our viewpoint. And so now we're going to switch on an additional map. Um, and then let's see what we can find in this map. So here um, we can see um, different color codings. If we wanna, of course, you know, uh, see what that means uh, we can easily link back to geofacets to then see um, what does the legend mean because of course in the in the Google Earth view that's not so easy but we can just open the original image and then we can quickly see so red means granite um, uh, yellow is uh, calc alkaline intrusions uh, the green means feeder zones and so like that we can start to explore so going back to Google Earth, that's our, our uh, next map. So now let's uh, start to move a bit to the south. So we will go to location three. So I will again hide the map so that we can really see the visuals. So this is another uh, viewpoint, but then from the south. So we're really starting to look at it from uh, all angles. And again, here we have a nice street view. And so we can even, um, you know, take a look at the other side. So this is the view towards the south. And then we can, uh, because here there is a path that we can follow, we can almost again do like a virtual hike. And so let's just move a little bit. We can look around again. Here we see um, all these uh, tilted layers. So this yeah, could be something that is really interesting towards the south. And so like that, again, we can nicely explore. Let's go a bit further to see if it really changes or not. So here we are at a lake now. And so again, we can see those layers that we saw before. Um, so if we now want to start exploring, like what are these tilted layers? Um, we can move a bit to the south. And so there I found like uh, also in geofacets um, some information that can help us assess. So um, let's first go there. And so what we can start to see So we're flying around here. Um, so here, this is um, uh, a, a picture uh, that I found in GeoFacets. Um, here you can see the source. I, I included a link so that I can always find it back. And we can see, so this figure shows an overview of uh, a syncline and it's looking north towards uh, where we just were before, towards the intrusive complex. And so we can see oh, here- the que nos interesa. Y podemos ver aquí esta inclinación y estas capas inclinadas y si a continuación si agrandamos esta imagen podemos ver con mucho detalle muy bien los detalles que nos interesan en este mismo artículo de esta foto encontré esta este mapa podemos reunirlo todo y podemos componer todo y en sincronía se muestra en el mapa esta superposición, las formas distintas 
y si a continuación empezamos quizás cambiando al modo transparente que nos permitirá ver cómo esto se relaciona a la geología y a nuestro estudio y a las imágenes que nos interesa. Una vez más, una manera interesante de explorar todo virtualmente desde el punto de vista de arriba hacia abajo. Y a continuación vamos a achicar un poquito para tener un poco de perspectiva y contexto, porque hemos ido a distintos sitios. Tengo aquí un mapa original donde se puede ver. Aquí tenemos la ubicación 1, 2, 3, 4. Y en el contexto de la geología que estudiamos, donde se mostrará si agrandamos la imagen. Vemos que esto, que es el ploteo donde estábamos, podemos hacer eh, pista puntual. Podemos asimismo desplazarnos hacia el este o hacia el oeste. Podemos ver que hay un repliegue aquí y quizás sea interesante ver cómo están estas estructuras alineadas en este sector y en esta imagen para que veamos cómo corresponde una a la otra. Y a partir de ahí vi que este mapa indica quizás eh, otras ubicaciones. Por ejemplo, esta cordillera de Marina. Vamos a buscar esto y una vez más tenemos más fotos de afloramientos. Vamos a ver eh, en la formación de Punta Barrosa, por ejemplo, donde se puede ver otro afloramiento en esta columna a la izquierda. Y una vez más, incluso el enlace de vuelta a Geofacet que nos permite verificar qué otras informaciones están disponibles. Como podéis ver, se trata del mismo artículo del mapa sin los afloramientos. Y podemos ver aquí que este artículo también contiene gráficas y columnas. A ver, vamos a agrandar y aquí podemos ver las formaciones que nos interesan. La formación de Punta Barrosa, por ejemplo, igual encontré en Geofacet de información respecto a Cerro Toro y podemos empezar, por lo tanto, a entender la relación y la diferencia entre estas ubicaciones que estamos visitando en nuestro tour virtual. Volvamos ahora a Google Earth y lo que quisiera hacer con vosotros es irnos hacia el oeste y explorar un poco el glacial aquí. Podemos ver eh, que se puede apalancar pues la información y, y eh, la opción de Street View de Google Earth. Y me fijé que alguien añadió una vista muy bonita de arriba. Y fíjense, aquí está. Y podemos verla a partir del agua incluso, ¿no? Y si hacemos un giro hacia el norte, podremos ver el hielo y en la ubicación 7, por otro lado, tenemos una vista muy cercana y aquí tenemos pues una excursión virtual una vez más, donde podremos ver casi como si estuviéramos allí. Claro que no es lo mismo que estar allí presencialmente, pero nos da una buena idea. Podemos ver el entorno en estas vistas de 360 grados donde se pueden ver todas las capas. Podemos retroceder o avanzar en este, este mismo recorrido donde se puede ver una vez más el glacial. Y con ello, si ahora más o menos achicamos la imagen, se puede continuar ulteriormente. Hay mucho más, pero sí, efectivamente. Tenemos limitaciones de tiempo, por lo tanto, con ello espero que ya les dé una idea de cómo podemos efectivamente hacer una excursión virtual para este área. Y ahora, si achico la imagen, tenemos la vista, ¿no? Podemos ver todas las ubicaciones, ubicación 1 aquí, 1, 2 aquí, 3, 4 y 5, y después 6 y 7 que estaban aquí. Y si ahora retrocedo un poco y resumo lo que hice, Aquí empezamos en geología. Si ahora resumimos lo que hicimos, 
Fuimos a distintas uh, ubicaciones o locales y una de las cosas que quiero recalcar es que este punto de vista es pues... You know, seeing the nice inclinal structure at location uh, four and then uh, here more outcrops and then of, of course um, trying to, yeah, getting an understanding of how do the different formations, how do the different um, rock layers relate also in time. So we can see, for example, those are both upper Cretaceous, but we can also see the relative age so that we know which one is older, which one is younger. Oops, sorry. And then, uh, yeah, just this really nice view. Um, so that was our first example. As I mentioned, we'll cover uh, three different examples. So the, the next one, Altiplano, where we will focus on uh, lithium. So again, a combination of geofacets and Google Earth. Um, here I'll just, you know, walk you through. So um, we can again uh, use the spatial search capabilities um, and then refine for lithium, because in this case, we're looking for lithium. And as you can see, uh, we very quickly pull up um, all these maps. So we have uh, almost 70 results for this search. Um, here is the first result. So it, it shows an overview. In this case, it mentions, you know, Western United States, but in this article, there's actually also a map that gives a really nice uh, overview for our area of interest. So what we can then do is again, download the map, put it in Google Earth, and then uh, we can start to digitize. So for example, one, uh, um, well, one of the biggest lithium, the, the biggest lithium brine, right, is, is located on, on this map. So we can really start to explore looking at Google Earth. Here we get this nice view. Again, we can uh, use the street view option to, uh, yeah, uh, almost, you know, go there virtually. Here we can see, you know, all the white and then a view in a, in a different direction, more towards the west. Um, then some more detailed maps, in this case showing um, the variation in lithium content. So again, we can overlay that on Google Earth and we get an idea, so we can see the lines. Um, so that was area one, then we can go to location two, so um, Here a different view. Here in Google Maps, we can again very nicely see um, the topography and the different features. Then uh, two different maps. So the first map is uh, really a map of this brine uh, showing the shallow brines. And then the second map is showing the deep brines. And so this, you know, also allows you um, to visually um, compare uh, the differences. Um, we can, again, you know, go to geofacets to understand a bit better uh, what this is about. So here we can see um, the details. So again, the article, then uh, the abstract, and then here also a nice sketch that gives us uh, a bit more detail about this brine. Then uh, we could go, you know, to many more locations. So here I picked a third location uh, in, in between, almost in between the, the two that we went to so far. And then here again, a very nice view. We can already, already see from here. And then a map that gives us uh, some detail. And then we can zoom in. And so like that, you know, again, you can start to explore virtually, uh, looking also at the pictures that, um, that are available to really form an image and to, yeah, just explore virt virtually. So yeah, that was the, 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 the second example. Um, so looking at lithium, so we went to three different locations. Um, so this was a very nice uh, um, street view then here. Um, more uh, focusing on, on the characteristics of this uh, brine. And then here, uh, the third location where we can nicely zoom in to, to get an idea of what it, what it looks like from above. Then the third example is uh, more in Brazil. 
Um, so where we want to look at rare earth elements, of course, this is pretty broad. It's just yet yeah, to give you another idea um, of, you know, how this could work um, with, with, you know, exploring virtually. So again, geofacets and Google Earth. And so in this case, we'll uh, again start with the spatial just because, yeah, that, that's really what we're aiming for. Um, so yeah, very big search. You can see, right, for Brazil, uh, almost 40,000 results, uh, uh, maps, figures, tables. Um, what I then did is filter for rare earth elements and, and also for the abbreviation, so for R-E-E-E. -E. And so we can see that then we filter down to almost 3,500 results. So that's much more manageable. We can see uh, different types of content. So I can see lots of graphs and tables actually, also some uh, photos because uh, yeah, we're on a virtual field trip. We're mainly interested in outcrop photos or other types of photos that, that can help us really explore what the, you know, what the, the geology looks like. So what I did is I used the, the content type filter to filter for photos. And now you can see that we have all these photos. Um, so this first one actually looks yeah, pretty interesting. So if we then look in detail, so this is actually talking about the potential for uh, rare earth element uh, deposits um, in the Serra Dourada granite. Um, so from there, we can start to explore here. We can yeah, read a bit more again uh, in the abstract um, to see of course, you know, if, if at one point you're interested really in the article, uh, you may have noticed these uh, links. So there's this read-only article viewer and view at publisher. And so those basically allow you to also view the article. So the read-only viewer um, is always available. Um, it allows you to view the article, but you cannot save or download it. And then the view at publisher allows you to go, for example, in this case, Elsevier, but if it's a map from AAPG, it would direct you to AAPG. And so there, it really depends on the access uh, that you have to, you know, those publishers and societies. So yeah, then in the same article, again, a nice map. Um, so yeah, that, you know, the maps, of course, you know, if they're georeferenced, they always help us to make this quick connection uh, between what we find here in GeoFacets and then to display it spatially in Google Earth. So um, again, you know, I put that map in Google Earth and what we can then see again is, you know, if we uh, slowly change the transparency. So first we can see here where it is located, but then we can see that feature nicely back. Um, then to a totally different area, so uh, way up more to the north, I, I again found some, you know, interesting uh, photos here. Again, uh, um, the, the title that helps you assess, like, uh, what is the source article? And then here, another map, which again can help us actually locate um, in Google Earth to do our virtual trip. And so again, here we can see this seems this, this map is draped over the surface in Google Earth. And then again, if we change the transparency, we can nicely see back this feature. So you can switch back and forth. We can see the outline. So yeah, that was our third. Um, uh, as I mentioned, of course, you know, we, we th this is just some examples. You can, you know, continue with this. There is many more locations, um, but yeah, today I will uh, keep it, uh, limited to these two for, for this particular example. So here, location one, the map with the, the photo, and then uh, location two, again, the map with the photo. And so, yeah, like that, um, uh, um, basically, yeah, to summarize, so, so um, we really, yeah, we went on these three virtual field trips. So uh, first exploring the geology of Torres del Paine in Chile, um, really looking at uh, you know, the, the, the granite, but then also to the, yeah, the Pluton, then you know, looking at the syncline to the south, uh, seeing the relationships between the layers and then also some nice uh, viewpoints. Then the second example was about lithium where we went to three different places. And then in Brazil, uh, the rare earth elements. And so I hope that with this, uh, yeah, that, that, that I was able to take you on a virtual field trip. Um, and just to mention that um, uh, 
uh, of course, you know, as I also said in introduction, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, in general, you know, most of us will prefer like a real field trip. I actually, you know, got really felt, you know, like traveling as I was preparing for this, like I would love to go here myself. Um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, it, it's not possible. Um, I think, you know, that I, I, I hope I showed you today that, um, you know, this sort of this type of approach can really help you prepare for a field trip so that you can be, you know, as efficient as possible because usually, um, yeah, time is limited. Um, or, you know, when it's not possible that this can be a nice alternative, you know, until, yeah, uh, it's, it's possible again to, to travel. And so with that, um, yeah, I would like to pass it back, uh, Mariela, to you for, for any questions. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much for showing and preparing this presentation. Um, let's one thing. Um, ex Samara, do you want, eh, Samara, vos se quer compartilhar o poll agora? Por enquanto. Tá. Um, vou falar em português agora, um, se por favor podem eh, preencher os dados aqui é um poll, eh, eh, ajuda, nos ajuda eh, para eh, continuar oferecendo eh, essas sessões, tá? Um, por enquanto vocês preenchem essa poll, eh, eu queria eh, compartilhar algumas respostas na realidade, eh? respostas que já fizeram, eh, por exemplo, perguntas eh, de mais de um dos participantes. O acesso a Geofacet, por exemplo, tem custo? Sim, sí, tá? é uma assinatura. Eh, para os que estão em espanhol, eh, eh, Geofacet é uma subscrição, é uma assinatura anual. Tá? Qualquer de vocês, se vocês quiserem, eh, se quiserem, eh, podem me contactar. Uh, depois, um, outra, mais em relação a eventos, eh, o próximo evento vai ser mais de engenharia, mas eh, como falei no início, estas sessões foram gravadas, vocês podem acessar essas sessões desde o canal YouTube, eh, mas também vai receber o e-mail eh, de esta sessão em um dia, mais ou menos, ou dois dias, tá? Um, tinha outras perguntas. Luiz, não sei se você conseguiu ver alguma das perguntas. Não, não tinha nenhuma pergunta especificamente. Tem uma pendente ainda, do Mahesh, é, que eu acho que é para a Sandra mais. As outras eram só agradecimentos e perguntas mais simples, já foram respondidas. Uh, yes, there is, Sandra, there is, uh, I think you can have access to the panelist option, uh, whereas there's a question that is much more technical from Mahesh. If you can read it, and uh, in the meantime, I will answer to Flavio. Um, Flavio, I think you speak English as well, so that's why I'm going to, to, to respond this in English. Uh, related to clients, well, one, one thing, uh, GeoFacets is the same platform for um, academic and corporates, first of all. This is good in terms of education because it's the same platform they will use in the future in the industry. In terms of details of oil and gas clients, uh, obviously I will need to speak with you uh, with further details, you know, it's just to understand where are you from and this kind of information and then definitely we can discuss about that. But yes, in terms of exploration teams in oil and gas uh, corporates and mining uh, corporates as well. Um, in relação a eventos, eu ia falar, vamos de geociência, vamos a oferecer, e vocês vão ver depois, é, mas não temos a data confirmada, vai ter mais relação a data management. Por quê? Porque tivemos muitas perguntas também do conteúdo de Geofacet, mas o que acontece quando 
eh, as corporações ou eh, as universidades têm informação proprietária que gostariam de acessar desde o Geofacets. Então, possivelmente esse próximo evento não seja já de virtual trips, mas seja de conteúdo. Eh, Sandra, did you have the chance to see Mah Mahesh question? Yeah, so uh, there was a question about um, is it possible to see more crustal uh, structures? Uh, that's the one you're referring to, right? So, um, yeah, so for that, um, yeah, so I think, you know, uh, an, an example is uh, what we were looking at. So this, um, this fold structure, this incline, I, I think, you know, com combining um, uh, uh, things like the maps from geofacets with the view from Google Earth can, can give you a high level view. Um, in this case, you know, actually that, that fold structure was, was very nicely visible um, both, yeah, when walking around, we could see the tilted layers, but then also from the top view, we can, yeah, see that structure and then especially confirming with the map, um, uh, yeah, that, that, that this is, you know, what we see. Um, I think, you know, if it's to the level of, you know, being able to, to really get, uh, so, yeah, and, uh, sorry, then also to get like a high level understanding of the orientation, like, you know, is it more north-south oriented, east-west? Um, you know, those kind of things are, I think, sometimes possible, sometimes not. It depends on how nicely exposed it is. Um, uh, the details as to, you know, what exactly is the dip at this location. Uh, yeah, there, of course, you know, that that's like a level of detail. It, yeah, that almost gets to the sampling uh, type of approach where, yeah, in the end, you really have to, you know, take your compass and really measure the dip of the layers. So, yeah, I hope with that, you know, that I answered that uh, question. Yes, thank you, Sandra. Um, uh, Mahesh, uh, if you have further uh, questions related to that, obviously we can discuss this uh, after the, the presentation. Uh, estamos eh, ya con el tiempo, estoy mezclando español y portugués ahora, eh, ya estamos con el tiempo, ¿no? Uh, so I there are still some questions, but what I see is that they are much more related to uh, commercial issues. So we can speak with you uh, all individually, especially, for example, related to CAPES access, some individual access, cost access. All this information is with me. So I will be in contact with all you that were asking this. And obviously, you can definitely send me an email directly. Um, thank you, Sandra, for joining. Um, thank you for the team in the team in, today. In today's presentation, Luis Vashinsky is with us. He is customer consultant from engineering. Samara and Cristiani from marketing, and Sandra. Um, gostaria de agradecer a todos pela participação. Vamos continuar em contacto. Eh, agora que já com os dois, as duas sessões de Virtual Trips, já acho que já temos como uma com, comunidade de geociência. Eu agradeço a todos vocês. Eh, e vamos continuar então com eventos. Luiz, você quer adicionar mais alguma coisa? Não, eu só não consegui responder as perguntas todas. Sem problema, é. porque já estamos com o tempo. Juan também tem o seu tempo Perfeito. de tradução. Então, acho que vamos a, a encerrar eh, por hoje. Vamos a cerrar la sesión eh, por ahora. Cualquier de las preguntas que han quedado pendientes, eh, vamos a tener registro de todas ellas y los estaremos contactando. Una vez más, gracias a todos desde el grupo del SEVIER para todos ustedes que han participado en la sesión de hoy. Que tengan un buen día, un buen cierre de semana. Samara, você quer fechar a sessão? Sim, vou fechar agora. <risos>